Hello, and welcome back to Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion. For this final episode of our third season, we welcome Dr. Paul Callis from UC Berkeley to the show. He is an astronomer studying the exoplanet HD 10696b, which might just resemble an unseen ninth planet in our own solar system. But first, we're going to journey out far in space and back in time, as astronomers lay their sights on the most distant and oldest galaxy ever seen. Closer to home, we examine the discovery of hexamine, a chemical critical to the development of life inside an asteroid. Finally, we listen in on radio waves from the exoplanet Tau Goodies B and learn how it shows the first ever evidence for a magnetic field surrounding a planet in an alien solar system. Astronomers at the Keck Observatory in Hawaii recently measured the distance to the ancient galaxy GNZ11 finding it is the oldest and most distant galaxy ever seen. This ancient galaxy formed just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, when the universe was just 3% of its current age. Located 13.4 billion light-years from Earth, it lies close to the edge of the observable universe. Where, we're, where we will find the oldest light in the cosmos. For the first time ever, researchers at NASA and in Japan have found hexamine, or HMT, a chemical necessary for the development of life within an asteroid. This chemical, used in the production and regulation of proteins and amino acids, may be common in asteroids, new research suggests. This study showed that examination techniques used in earlier studies may have actually destroyed hexamine in samples, preventing researchers from finding the chemical in asteroids before now. The exoplanet Tau Budis B a massive world orbiting exceptionally close to a pair of stars, was recently observed radiating radio waves. Such a signal is likely the result of charged particles from the stars being warped in their paths past the mighty world. This observation represents the first evidence for magnetic fields around distant planets, potentially affecting our search for life in the universe. On January 5th, we're going to kick off the fourth season of this show, when we'll be joined by Dr. Jake Turner of Cornell University, who made this fascinating discovery. Make sure to tune in then. Looking deep into the universe, we see backwards in time, and the oldest light in the universe holds secrets to how everything around us will, one day, end. Meanwhile, stars, planets, and galaxies dance in an intricate ballet, occasionally giving birth to life. We are a fledgling species, just beginning to visit other worlds. We are a way for the universe to understand itself. The Cosmic Companion strives to bring the universe down to Earth, and we depend on your help to make it happen. For information on subscriptions and ways to donate to this program, please visit thecosmiccompanion.net. Thank you. But next up, we're going to talk to Dr. Paul Callis, an astronomer from UC Berkeley, who recently worked on a study of the exoplanet HD 10696b which could resemble an unseen planet at the edge of our own solar system. This week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, we're happy to be joined by Dr. Paul Kalis, 
He is an astronomer at UC Berkeley who recently worked on a new study showing how the exoplanet HD 106906b could resemble a theoretical ninth planet in our own solar system. Welcome to the show, Paul. Thank you very much, James. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about this exoplanet and what do we know about HD 106906b? Ah, okay, so um, HD 106906b is its actual name. It doesn't have another name. Uh, and HD 106906 without the b is the star. So it's the number we use to identify that star, uh, which is in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, it's not too close to the sun, but neither too far away. It's um, uh, slightly over 100 parsec away, over 330 light years away. And it's in a young region, uh, relatively young, not exactly a stellar nursery, uh, which you might say would be 1 million years old or younger. This is roughly a 15 million year old star. So it's uh, sort of an adolescent. Um, and uh, when planetary systems are 15 million years old, the, the planets have finished their formation. And yet it's a very active time when the final architecture of a planetary system hasn't been established yet. And in our own solar system, this was a critical period of time when the solar system was full of debris. Uh, it's possible our own moon hadn't formed yet. The Earth was without a moon. And the planetary system may have had a slightly different architecture than what we know today in its final form. So these, uh, these areas of the sky and these uh, younger systems are very interesting to study because in real time, we're getting a picture of what our own solar system might have looked like 4.6 billion years ago when it was only 15 million years old. Wow. And so this planet was first discovered in 2013. Can you tell us a little bit about what we've learned about that world during that time and how our yeah. knowledge of it has changed? Yeah, that's right. It was discovered um, using ground-based observatories in 2013 um, by my colleague Vanessa Bailey in Arizona. And uh, what's interesting is the Hubble Space Telescope observed it in 2004. And uh, it was not understood that something, a star in the field was actually a planet. Uh, people were looking at the planet, but thought it was one of the background stars. Mm. And uh, what was accomplished in 2013 is by looking at this um, constellation of stars around 106906b, it was discovered that one of those points of light was what we call co-moving with 106906b, with 106906, the star. So one way to discover planets is to look at stars as they move across the sky, nearby stars. As they're moving across the sky, if anything else is moving with it, then it's not a background object, but rather a foreground object physically linked to the star. And that's how Vanessa Bailey and colleagues discovered the planet. Uh, and it's rather unusual, it's not exactly like our Jupiter, it's 11 times the mass of Jupiter. And uh, in 2015, what we discovered um, using more ground-based data, uh, in this case, the Gemini Planet Imager, um, which I worked on for uh, many years, uh, as we were observing uh, from Chile uh, in the Andes Mountains, we discovered that uh, 10696 has a circumstellar disk much like our asteroid belt or Kuiper belt is a disk of material around our sun. But that disk was not aligned with the planet. Mm. So then the system became even more mysterious. Why would the plane of the system where most of the material resides 
and presumably form there. Why is the planet tilted away from this disk by over 20 degrees? And not only that, the planet is very far from its star at 737 astronomical units. So that's 737 times the Earth-Sun distance, um, which is very far. Planets don't form at those distances away from a star because there isn't enough material in the first place to form planets that far away from a star. So 106 96 was a huge mystery in 2015. It was misaligned from its uh, disk. It was very distant from its star. And that raised all these questions. Did it form there somehow at this great distance? Was it captured by another star from another star, for example? Or did something occur in the evolution of this system where the planet 106906b actually was born much closer to the star where we expect it to be born in a circumstellar disk near the star. And then through subsequent dynamical evolution or gravitational interactions with other objects, through those gravitational perturbations, maybe it got kicked out to the location where we currently see it. And one of the missing pieces of the puzzle was, well, uh, that may be the case, but what is the orbit of 106906b, the planet? We knew its mass, we knew its location was odd, but we didn't actually have an orbit determination. We didn't know uh, in which direction it orbits the star, or even if it orbits the star at all. Mm. Uh, it could be on a trajectory that was leaving the system a hyperbolic trajectory. All of those were unknown, and that's what our current work uh, solves. We discovered the orbit for this uh, strange planet, 106906b. Wow, that's fascinating. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's being referred to, especially, you know, uh, as um, possibly having some similarities to a potential planet nine at the edge of our solar system. Uh, can you tell us um, a little bit about why, how that could be and what it might have in common with this mysterious planet? Yeah, exactly. Um, planet nine is a hypothetical 10 earth mass planet uh, in our outer, outer solar system. And uh, by outer, uh, we're talking about 500 astronomical units or more. Um, and there are other objects in the outer solar system. Uh, 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 people who like astronomy uh, may know about our Kuiper belt. And this is uh, a population of small objects that include Pluto that are beyond the orb of Neptune. Another phrase we sometimes use is the trans-Neptunian belt. Uh, and this population of objects um, has some unusual features. And uh, one of them is that some objects are uh, located uh, a large distance away from the sun and never interact with our own planetary system. And these are called detached objects. They're detached from interactions with Neptune. Their perihelion, or their closest approach to our solar system, never gets closer than 30 AU. Uh, and the question is, well, how is it possible that you have detached objects? Uh, how did they get there? And um, there's some ideas that uh, these detached objects um, formed because they were first scattered by Jupiter or the other giant planets into an elliptical orbit, and then passing stars uh, influence that orbit so that the perihelion no longer passes through the planetary system. And that's why we see detached objects 4.6 billion years later. Comets are supposedly formed in the same way, Oort cloud comets. How do you get an Oort cloud around our sun when comets presumably formed much closer in, uh, in a circumstellar disk. And it's the same process, a process of being kicked out 
And then having your perihelion, your closest approach distance, moved away from the planetary system by a passing star. So to get back to your question, there are detached objects, Kuiper Belt objects, such as Sedna, and they all seem to be aligned in a certain direction. And that has brought about the theory or the hypothesis that there is a planet nine out there that is gravitationally perturbing that, that those Kuiper Belt objects. And lo and behold, when we look at the HD 106-906 system, we see a very distorted circumstellar disk as if something is perturbing it. Hmm. And now we've discovered that the orbit of 106-906b is detached, is detached from that plan inner planetary system. It's uh, eccentric or elliptical. And of course, as we knew before, it's at a very large distance. And that's those orbital properties are the comparison we make to planet nine. Hmm. So it's a planet nine like orbit. 106, 906b is 11 Jupiter masses instead of 10 Earth masses, which is what planet nine supposedly theoretically is. Uh, but the orbit is very similar. So it's a planet nine like orbit. So ironically, uh, we've discovered more about the planet nine of the 106-906 system than we have of our own planetary system, since we haven't actually discovered uh, uh, a planet nine yet. Wow. And you're able to, your team is able to develop um, an orbit, de determine the orbit of this world uh, based on 14 years of data, if I remember correctly, yet it's supposed to have an orbit of around 10,000 years or so. Yeah. So can you tell this us about how you're able to get so much, so much information from such a small amount of data? Yeah, that, this was a difficult project. Um, when we first started it out, I wasn't sure we were going to get an orbit. Um, we needed um, a precision that we hadn't attained, obtained before using other techniques. Let me just show you the one of the main images. Uh, here are the data. Before we were looking at an artist's illustration where you may have noticed that the, the central star was depicted as two stars. And indeed 106906 is a binary star. Um, and together the, the two stars have roughly six solar luminosities. And then here is the field of 106906, if I can get out of the way. Yeah. So here is the distorted uh, circumstellar disk, which is truncated on this side. Hmm. So it's like, it's, it's as if half of it has been chopped off. And then um, if you look at these points of light, these are background stars, except that object there. And that's the planet. That's not a star at all. And here's a close up of, uh, of the data. And what you can see, you can actually see the individual pixels here. Mm. And then you can see that here's the 2004 Hubble data and here's the 2017 Hubble data. And you can see that it moved in this direction from 2004 to 2017. And all that motion is within a pixel, a single pixel. So how do you actually find something moving when the motion is inside one pixel. Mm -hmm. So you need to use uh, very uh, detailed techniques and sort of a painstaking. And um, one of the sort of innovations we have in our paper is to look at these background stars. These background stars uh, have uh, new data from the Gaia mission. The Gaia mission is mapping the positions and motions of billions of stars in the sky. So using Gaia, we know where these stars are. And we also know where 106906 is to incredible precision. So what this offers is a fine grid, a reference grid, just like graph paper, where the lines are very fine and precise. And that's actually how we got the orbit of uh, the planet within a single pixel using uh, 
the astrometry from Hubble data. Remember, the Hubble Space Telescope is um, above Earth's atmosphere, and there's very little blurring of images. So we get some of the sharpest images over a wide field come from the Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, it does, uh, it can do that because it's above the atmosphere. It's much harder to do it from the ground. So we have exquisitely sharp images. And at the same time, we have exquisitely precise position information from Gaia. And that's how we found this motion. And like you said, uh, the orbital period of the planet is, uh, you said 10,000 years, that's possible. We wrote 15,000 years, mm -hmm. uh, plus or minus five, certainly. Uh, so 15,000 years is how long it takes for this planet to go around its star. In other words, one year for this planet here is 15,000 Earth years. And how do we get the motion of such an object if we're only looking 14 years out of the 15,000 years? Right. Right. And I just, that's, that's how I, that's, we accomplished it. Uh, it was hard to do. Uh, and, uh, um, uh, it, but it turned out we have a measurement. Uh, we need more measurements. So the experiment is not over. Hmm. We need to image the planet as it keeps moving along over time and see how you have all these different lines here. This sort of represents the uncertainty in our knowledge of the orbit. It could be this is one possible orbit, then maybe this one is another possible orbit. So as we continue following the planet over time, tracking its motion, these orbits will get more precise. Wow. And um, so how finally, um, how could studying exoplanets teach us how to find planet X? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure if uh, what the current status is for the search for Planet X or Planet Nine. So far, nothing has been found. What what this uh, system shows is that a Planet Nine is possible. So remember, when Planet Nine is proposed as a theory or as a hypothesis, there is no other example of it in the universe in our knowledge of astronomy. Hmm. Uh, so what we're contributing here is sort of uh, the, the fact that such objects do exist around other stars. Planet nines are possible. So it's not entirely far-fetched that we have a mysterious planet nine in our solar system. Um, so uh, not only that, that this unusual orbital configuration where a planet becomes detached from its circumstellar disk and from its host star. All of that can happen within 15 million years. So very early in the life of a planetary system, when it's less than 15 million years old, a lot has already happened. The architecture of the planetary system can rapidly evolve into a configuration that resembles what we think is true about our own solar system today, 4.6 billion years later, where we have detached objects, possibly a detached planetary nine, but then we still have a central planetary system right in there. Wow. Yeah, that's fascinating. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Paul. It was great talking with you. Thank you very much, James. It was my pleasure. Thanks. And that was Dr. Paul Kalis, astronomer at UC Berkeley. Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion will be taking a week off for the week of December 29th, but we will return on January 5th of next year, kicking off the fourth season of our show. Join us then when we'll be joined by Dr. Jake Turner from the Carl Sagan Institute at Cornell University, telling us about his study of magnetic fields surrounding alien worlds. 
Join us each week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion as we bring space and astronomy news together with groundbreaking scientists directly to listeners and viewers around the globe. Subscribers to our VIP newsletter see every episode of this show a day before the general public. VIP subscriptions are now just half price, only $25 a year until Christmas Day. It makes a great last minute gift. Visit thecosmiccompanion.net to learn more. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and keep your wonder alive. If you enjoyed this episode of Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, Please download and share the episode on YouTube, Facebook video, or on any major podcast provider. For more details on space and astronomy news, please visit thecosmiccompanion.com or thecosmiccompanion.net. Happy holidays. 